that was me just playing a pattern of sweeps, a technique that I use all the time. We're in fact using it on one of the saddest banjo tunes of all time, Undone in Sorrow, written by the great Ola Bella Reed. If you wanna see how the sweep is deployed in an actual tune, hop on over to my Patreon campaign, Banjo Quest. It's in the description below. Join us, it's a lot of fun. And we're gonna get started on the sweep today. I'm gonna to show you the basics today on Banjo Quest. So what is a sweep? A sweep is just a series of drop thumb and ditty ostinatos, and an ostinato is just a musical pattern that repeats. So we are in the key of G, G standard tuning. We don't have to touch the banjo right now with our fretting hand. Let's just use our striking hand. And what I'm gonna do is a ditty on the fourth and fifth strings, followed by a drop thumb on strings one and two. And we put that together nice and slow. And this is what I consider our vanilla sweep, just our basic sweep. We start on the bass string, the fourth string, and our drop thumb happens on the two treble strings, one and two. The reason why this is so powerful is it gives you a bass note on the one of the beat. So you can hear it as I go here, as I go up in tempo. It's really nice and strong feeling to have a bass note first. So that's why I default to this as my vanilla or starting version of the sweep. Now we can add chords to this. This is really cool. So we can take our open tuning, add a C shape, and that bass pulse is really strong with this pattern speed it up a little bit and it really starts to come alive. Now you don't have to stay static on that bass note. You can add some hammer-ons if you want and it creates a real cool moving bass part. Listen to when I go to the C now. Once you get good at the pattern, you can kind of play melody lines on your one and keep that drop thumb going on the treble strings. And so basically you get an almost finger picked like sound when you start playing sort of melodies. So something like this. possibilities with the sweep are endless and they're a great way to arpeggiate yourself through chords but also just add a lot of density to the sounds that you're making on the instrument. So now that we have this basic version of the sweep down, let's talk about how to do it well. So let's get rid of our fretting hand and focus on that striking hand. We've got our ditty followed by our drop thumb. And one of the cool features of the sweep that makes it so interesting and powerful is that the striking gap between your striking finger and your thumb will not change as you move to different strings because of the nature of the sweep. The striking gap is just an adjacent string apart. So we've got adjacent strings and we've got adjacent strings. So I'm not op I don't need to open or close my striking gap, the gap between my thumb and my striking finger at all to do the sweep. It just stays the same. It's one of the reasons why you can get it going fast and smooth if you practice it enough. Now, 
just take a look here. I'm going to angle it so you can see. I'm going to ramp it up slowly so you can see that my, my hand is really moving as a unit. It's almost as if my fingers themselves, my thumb and my striking fingers, are frozen and the energy is coming from mostly me rocking on the fulcrum here and maybe a little wrist movement as well. So watch as I sweep the sweep. So one of the ways I taught myself how to do this fast, I mean, it took me a long time. So if this is troublesome for you, if you can't get past a certain tempo, just keep at it. I literally kept a sweep journal for many, many months, and it took me a while to crack this nut years ago. So one of the things I noticed that when I was trying to get faster is if I added just a little bit of tenseness, and tension is probably the wrong word. It's more, I added structure to my striking hand. So my thumb is not flopping around and neither is my striking finger, my middle finger, because I'm introducing a, just a little bit of tension into that hand that's giving it lots of structure. So it's not being influenced by the strings at all. If your hand catches on those strings, if it's floppy and loose, you're probably not going to be able to generate a lot of speed. The, the One of the ironies of speed is you have to be relaxed to go fast but there has to be structure in the hand so it's not being influenced too much by the strings so practice that as you get going faster just add a little bit of structure to the hand and focus on your contact with the fulcrum and with practice every single day you're gonna see this get faster and faster until it's really fast and smooth. Don't be surprised if this takes a long time. It took me a while, I expect it will take you a while. All of the people that I've shown this pattern to struggle to get it up to speed. It takes them a long time. Let it be hard and keep working on it. Work on it every day. All right, so our second version of the sweep is pretty easy. It's what I call the reverse sweep or the treble sweep where we are starting with the drop thumb and we're playing a ditty on the fourth and fifth strings. gives you a different flavor it allows you maybe to hit some melody notes that you might miss if you're focused on getting that bass string first so the way I think about these two patterns of the sweep is I use our vanilla sweep or the bass sweep as my backup for vocals and I use the treble sweep or the reverse sweep that second one as a way to maybe grab some melody notes it's a little bit more melodic if you will now, one more thing about the sweep that is really cool. The sweep allows you to skip the third string. And you may be like, well, who cares? The cool thing about that is it can relieve some of your chord shapes. So, for example, we've got our G. We've got our C. And then we've got this really cool D shape. And the cool thing about this is normally a full D in this tuning is this monstrosity that requires four fingers to be down. I often use a D power chord instead. And a lot of people use D7s. I'm not a fan of the D7, but that's a whole other topic. But with the sweep, because we are essentially skipping over the third string, we can get a sense of a full D chord and it sounds really beautiful. So this is really handy in a variety of different tunings. You're going to be surprised where that sweep fits and what chords become available to you that might be a little bit muddy or strange if we were to 
I actually love this chord, but it doesn't fit all context, getting all the strings ringing. So sometimes it's useful to have that third string out of the picture. Oh, that's pretty though. Anyway, this becomes a very powerful way to you, for you to move across the fretboard and not play the third string. So think of the sweep as a beautiful way to arpeggiate through chords, a powerful technique to improve the finesse of your right hand, and a way for you to streamline your chord voicings at will. All right, and that does it for today. If you want to see the sweep deployed in an actual tune, hop on over to Patreon below, join the Banjo Quest project. We're using it in the great sad tune, Undone in Sorrow. I'm taking that tune and I'm turning it into a sweep lover's paradise. So you can really feel how it's going to be deployed in an actual tune. And I hope you have a good day. We'll see you next time on Banjo Quest.